The Future of Housing was a think tank event held in June in Bristol during Bristol's Big Green Week and followed up in July with a community land trust meeting called Scaling It Up Community-Led Housing in Bristol. And this presentation is just going to try and get the core ideas from those events across in a simple package in maybe as little as 10 or 12 minutes. These pictures are of Lila in Leeds, Low Ampic Living Affordable Community. It's a co-housing community with 20 homes built into five blocks of apartments and with a common house uh, with a community kitchen that opens out onto a deck where they have parties beside their pond and it's a really nice place to live. These are some of the residents appearing posed for a newspaper article uh, on the edge of their allotments which are down the side of the site. Fantastic. Can we do things like that? And what's the difference? How do we normally get affordable housing? Well, it used to mean council housing. Councils built homes for people that didn't cost too much. Anybody could afford them. Council housing was a route out of poverty. Not anymore. Council houses got sold off and they cost as much as any ordinary housing now. And a lot of council housing is now rental housing. Housing association housing is just as much under attack. That leaves developer-led housing and community approaches, which is only a small proportion, but people want community housing. Is there a difference? Yeah. In Bristol, private housing costs average quarter of a million nearly, four times that in London. In Lilac, it costs 130,000 average cost of the homes at Lilac. Uh, which is lower because it's in the north, but this is also 30% lower than average house costs across Leeds. So there's something that a co-housing community is doing to keep prices down. Um, part of it is around having a housing co-op that you're a member of. And it's not just the cost of the house. Energy cost in an average home, 1,350 a year in the UK. Uh, 90% less at Lilac. Energy efficient homes. Intelligent people want to live like this. So if you ask a group of people interested in community housing where they'd rather live, uh, the majority of the people raise their hands on the right hand side. Um, and that brings in the question, how do we get from here to there? Uh, and it's worth thinking that through because it's going to save you a lot of money and it's getting to get you involved in a project where you get to live in a community with a bunch of people who you like. This is in part how you end up with very expensive housing. Land is disposed of for as much money as possible by councils in what is in effect an auction and developers compete to offer as much as possible and are sort of figuring out for themselves how many homes they can build uh, and how much they can sell them for and how little they can build them for. Uh, and it's a complicated equation, but the person who loses is the customer. This is developers and councils thinking through housing for you. You just get to be a consumer of house products at the end of it and then these feed through into an open market and you're into estate agents and what the margin will bear and the market is pumped up by money from offshore trusts being injected into the capital's housing market and that creates a housing bubble. Communities have the opportunity to do something different. The land doesn't have to be sold right at the start. It's not sold at the start, typically in the continent. Land is leased by cities to co-housing and self-build groups. And community land trusts can achieve something of the same effect. And indeed, councils can form their own community land trusts. And instead of getting as much money as possible up front and then having people in housing benefit forever, the council can lease the land out uh, at a fair ground rent and have people paying council tax because they're working. Uh, 
if you're doing self-build, if you're doing custom build, you're putting in some of the equity yourself, you're getting a community building groups to work together, you're saving on the build cost and you're saving on the developer cost because the community itself is becoming smart enough to be the developer and to insist on creating homes that aren't just sites that aren't just monocultures of homes but have got lots of shared facilities, even shared vehicles and energy like at Lilac. Net result, reduced house prices, question, can we put all this together in a package? What would that package look like? Uh, those three elements obviously, uh, the group needs to be able to design, plan and finance projects, that's the community becoming its developer properly, and communities want, yeah, they want the best materials, they want passive house standard homes, they want homes to be zero emissions and better. Why wouldn't you want that? Where do you put that package uh, and bring together a group of people who can help communities, sells, communities themselves build their own community and then help others do the same thing? Well, we've already got a base for this in Bristol and some hardware. The hardware is a uh, social community, an office building that's been turned into a social community um, with a housing developer and an architect and some materials work going on there as well as all kinds of other things, arts and crafts events. And it's got an operating system, a facilities manager called Coexist, Hamilton House Operating System. Coexist is an acronym Centre of Excellence in Sustainable Technology, but it's the group who run the building and such a group can be the group who run a community. And here's an example of homes that were built by this group in, uh, as pilot projects, uh, uh, laying down markers of what's possible. These are Bristol's first code level four sustainable homes built with a carbon capture technology. It's a form of immensely strong plywood called E-Urban. Uh, and the homes were used as social housing um, when they had groups of ex-offenders in them, there was a considerable reduction in re-offending rates. Treat people in a dignified way, give them support, give them a low running cost. They're going to want to keep in the community, and they do. Back to Lilac, first example of a mod cell community. And below is First example of commercial homes built using mod cell to prove it's possible. These are sold on the open market. They look like uh, typical homes in the area. They were built in Shirehampton, west of Bristol, brick clad homes. But behind the bricks is straw bale. That's a panel lying on the ground before it's lifted in place by crane. Um, the houses all sold on the first day they were shown. 400 people were interested to buy them. So, and the carbon capture materials, a lot of times and research has gone into bringing straw bale in from something that somebody builds in a forest um, and uh, into something that somebody builds on a university campus uh, and into something that you can build anywhere because you can get a high street mortgage. And this is a carbon capture home. There's 40, 34 tons of CO2 equivalent in this home, and that's equivalent to 45 years of running a solar array. Great. Better than zero carbon. How do we get the cost down? What's affordable? Government thinks that affordable means 20% off market value. It still means 70% of people can't afford that anymore. Affordable used to mean less than three times income. What would that mean? On average income of 30k, that means it's got to be less than 90,000 pounds. On a living wage of 15,000, it's got to be less than 45,000 pounds. Is that possible? We think so. Here's a few examples. Two bedroom apartment. If we built that at the current cost of building with straw bales, 90,000 pounds, that would be 
15,000 a square meter, which is affordable on three times average income. We think we can improve the cost of straw bale homes at 1,200 pound a square meter. We can build a 35 square meter bed sit, a starter home, for 42,000 pounds. That's less than three times 15,000. And there are people building super energy efficient homes who've already got the cost as low as £1,000 a square metre. This is from T-Solar in Wales. Uh, very nice home. Uh, wood on wooden frame filled with warm cell, which is recycled newsprint. Fantastic. Can you go even further than that? just want to show you some some homes that are built using recycled shipping containers. People get very creative. Fantastic. Uh, we have an idea to bootstrap this by starting off building a few homes at the more expensive prices, selling them in a luxury market, then dozens of homes that are affordable on average income, and then creating many more homes that are affordable by anyone. And here's an example of a site where we hope to do this, Ermine Way at Avon Mouth in Bristol, which would be as a community centre at the heart of the site. It's a former quarry and it would be probably a mix of uh, market, open market homes uh, and affordable and truly affordable homes, um, a similar site in Froome where we hope to build a mix, create a co-housing community with workspaces, that's the common house in, along the bottom there, and use that as a base to redevelop other sites in Froome, build a community to create more communities. Why wouldn't you do that? Uh, the land that we've currently got, there is a cost, the land was purchased, so some of the homes need to be sold at open market price to cover the cost of the land and then maybe there's a mix of groups that you could put in there some with skills in energy some supported shelter housing uh, some with people who are going to go on and help other people create their communities and maybe some affordable truly affordable apartments of the sort that i showed you earlier if you're a council you've already got land you don't need to put in open market home. It's possible to put sites together that are truly affordable for everyone. And that's where we should be headed. Sort of ecology check on this. Uh, the big issue have been running a campaign for some time to say that we should be using empty homes to house the homeless. Uh, we certainly agree. Uh, and here's an example of another group in Bristol running a project to do exactly that. This is abolish empty office buildings. They're converting an industrial site into some apartments. Bully for them, well done. Let's be doing much more of this. Let's have communities taking the power into their own hands and creating homes that everybody can afford. Just as a kind of ecology check, um, 20 years ago at the Rio Earth Summit we introduced the idea that we shouldn't be looking just out for economic growth but we've got to look after society and the environment as well. This diagram suggests that there's <laughs> some overlap between these values but the overlap isn't perfect and indeed if you do the giant council houses typically aren't environmentally great or weren't environmentally great, they're not economic anymore and social, well not always. Housing associations aren't economic for a lot of people now, um, but they are social communities of a sort. It is to be hoped. Developer-led housing, big exclamation mark, um, you're paying a lot of money, um, far more than the build cost, doesn't seem right, isn't right. But since Paris, um, you know, we've moved on 20 years 
And the question is, well, what we've just looked at, we've been looking at building houses that are communities, so there's a social value uh, below bubble market prices, truly affordable and environmentally sound, carbon capture homes, ticks boxes in every circle. Similarly with the energy, solar energy, shared energy, less energy, more environmentally sound and affordable. And we're creating workspaces where people can actually live and work in these communities as well. Ticks all the boxes. There's probably more information in the box below if you're looking at this on YouTube or something like that. And thank you very much for watching.